Good morning again, Coffee Chat friend. Just wanted to run through some of the points that we had that came up at our last Coffee Chat meeting, which took place a few days ago, and the topic was entrepreneurialism, entrepreneurship, entrepreneur, anything to do with enterprising and how that related to our quality of life. I'll just go through some of the notes that I took here. Points that jumped out at me. Working for self. That came up a few times. <clears throat> a vital step for a lot of people in their search for freedom. Opportunities. Somebody mentioned the four hour work week by Tim Ferriss also making a difference in the world that came up a few times somebody mentioned achievement contributing the, the, the sense that this individual looked up to somebody who would take the entrepreneurial route Uh, there's benefits that come from the hardship. Somebody mentioned noticing the need for something and then creating it and then getting that product into various different retail places. And how what was learned in that process was applied then to another opportunity. So it's all about, in that case, what have we learned from one enterprise that can be applied to another. Somebody mentioned that it can be a lot of hours versus a job, but that can be more rewarding. Somebody else mentioned that entrepreneurship is about embracing something fully. The different, and it's a difference sometimes between doers and dreamers. There was a quote from Aristotle, but I, I didn't get it. I wasn't able to keep up there. There's a lot of good quotes on that. And the, some of the aspects of an entrepreneur are the visionary, somebody who takes action, somebody who's resilient, somebody who's a risk taker. Somebody mentioned doing versus being. At the end of my life, what, I, what do I want to be recognized for? Sometimes in a family setting, chasing the big bucks is hard on children, so that's maybe a, a side effect of the entrepreneurial way. And that it really comes down to relationships first. One guy mentioned that it comes down to the problem. Once again, we talked about this before in, in our chat about problems. Identifying the problem and then solving it. That's kind of the key hallmark of the entrepreneur. Finding solutions, which then translates into success or failure. And it's about taking control of our lives. Somebody mentioned passion has to be there, the risk-taking, goal-setting, and doing what we love. Somebody mentioned that it's in us to learn. All of us have this capacity to some extent. And that if we recognize a need for something, which is another way of saying, rather than find a problem and fill it, find a need and fill it, if there's a need in one person, then very likely there's a need of it for that in a thousand people as well. Working smarter, not harder, through using systems. Somebody mentioned tax advantages of, biz, of, of entrepreneurship. Following our passions. And there was a quote, I'm not sure who said this first. I'd rather be pulled by the vision than pushed by the problem. 
I like that. Doing what we want is another, what somebody else said. Helping others is kind of at the root of it. And all contributions are important. All levels of contribution, I think what he was really saying, because he went on to explain that about how sometimes we see certain people as entrepreneurs, and therefore they're more important. But everybody who's contributing value is could be seen as that even if they'd be otherwise considered to be an employee, say, you know. Somebody else mentioned the need for passion and vision. Other people's, that is, we can gain from other people's knowledge. And, and he was going on about how, how can we not get eaten up by the others. I think that was in reference to the competition that's out there, that could perceive to be out there anyway. And he mentioned that there's actually a small percentage of people who actually succeed in this sort of endeavor. And he mentioned that the motive of the entrepreneurship is self first and then society. I think that's a good point too. We must be all in though, he was saying. It's, it's a full endeavor. Somebody else mentioned, a, I think it might have been a book or a program about teaching entrepreneurs how to fail. And this he, he went on a little bit about how that's important because there's a lot of failure that takes place. And if we can learn how to take those failures, then we're, it's an empowering thing. There were other things mentioned too because we went on to a discussion. But that, that was the main things that I had there for now. Now, I had a few points as well in terms of entrepreneur. The, the root of the word is to undertake or to commit oneself. And the, the, if you look at the word too, entre, which is French, means to enter. As far as I know, so you're, you're we're entering an endeavor full in, as somebody mentioned in the comments too so my question is you know when I was sitting there is why is it that we have the chairs in the room the table in the room why do we have the room in general to use for a discussion this room that I'm sitting in or whatever and, and, and my answer would be that because there was entrepreneurial endeavor that took place as somebody mentioned it was somebody who wanted something a return for his or her efforts and created these things so that they could market them that that's we look around at our cities and everything and it's all created by somebody who wanted to move move on a little bit in that aspect of their lives and, and I would say from observation that it is the nature within all of us it is like an intrinsic nature within all of us, all of, all of living nature, that is to say, to somehow grow and extend in some way. And the entrepreneurialism is just, is the, entre the aspect of the entrepreneur is just a reflection of that, it's an extension of that, it's a manifestation of that, if you will. But I would say that the difference between us as human beings and the rest of the animal kingdom, you might say, like birds and what have you, is that, well, in the example of a bird, a bird will build a nest as well, so they're enterprising, but they'll build one kind of nest for tens of thousands of years, so there isn't much competition, and they'll build it for themselves only, for the most part. Man, on the other hand, can specialize and build nests or houses for many people, And furthermore, this enterprising nature in many different human beings who would build many different houses sets up kind of a competition, if you will, so that one guy will come along and build a better house for the same price. And this will push the boundaries of the other guy. So it's like we're all standing on the shoulders of other people who built things, 
not only in our past, but in our current day and age, in whatever it is we're creating. And it's not only for money profit, but even for the creation of writings and, and works and music and all this sort of thing. All these creative, all these creations that we learn from others and we build on it. We, build, we can build upon it ourselves. So I would say that that brings in the competitive nature, which is in all nature as well, but it is certainly very prevalent in the human experience, the individual human experience. There's and there's a lot of a lot said about competition, which is which is there's people who say we shouldn't be competitive or what have you. But I would note the Robin Williams in Dead Poet Society where he talks about how, he, well, in, in Dead Poet Society, if you watch it, he's, he's, he's a teacher at this school, and he's also the football or soccer coach. I forget which, which sport it is. He's the coach, anyways, and he explains at one point the purpose in competition. And he makes the point that the main purpose in competition is not so much to be competing against the other guy or the other team, but to be able to put yourself up against their strengths so that we can grow ourselves. So that's an example of how when there's many contractors building houses, the guy who's building the best ones are perceived to be best with the best value that actually helps the others because it helps them to bring their standards up. And in the whole process of that, whole process of the enterprise and learning from others helps us eventually to become more self-aware of who we are, to be able to see our possibilities and our capabilities, and then grow from there. Finally, then, I would say that it's the nature within us, all of us, to want to grow and extend in some way. And the difference between us and the rest of nature is our enterprising way, our prevalent enterprising way, to multiply our our efforts through the the push, you might say, of this competitive nature, which helps us to then become self-aware. And I would say, in terms of the overall theme of coffee chat, improving the quality of our life experience, anytime we can become more self-aware and realize the capabilities that are intrinsic within us, and the possibilities that we can have, the, the more we'll, we're going to be able to see our origin, if you will, our foundation, if you will, and, and therefore experience a better quality of life. Hope this made some sense. Hope this is food for thought, all these comments. I look forward to talking to you in the near future. Bye-bye for now.